think the combination of the variety of lines of evidence that you'll see tomorrow in our presentations is, is a strong indication that, that clearly there was an extraterrestrial event. Now tying it to all these other types of uh, uh, coinciding, contemporaneous, however you want to put it, uh, changes in climate, changes in the ecosystem, and hydrologic changes across North America are extremely intriguing and very important to understanding just what role, if any, impacts play with, with respect to climate and, and, and maybe even influencing what happens to, uh, to animals that uh, are around at that time. So uh, it, it, it does tie very nicely together. I think we have a good story to tell you, and I hope you all show up tomorrow, and, and we'll, uh, we'll show you all our evidence. Okay. Uh, Thank you. 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 Thank
it's going to be very hard for the skeptics, I think, to take this range of evidence uh, and uh, where, uh, where, where there was evidence of, of major melting of the carbon at very high temperatures with the glass-like carbon, as Alan said, it's, it's an all of these sections, a hallmark of this YDB layer. And, and now the addition of the diamonds requiring substantially high pressures, it's very hard to argue that those kinds of, those kinds of uh, materials can be produced by normal earthly processes. So, uh, so that, I, I would add that. I, I would also add the, the, the increasing evidence of the wildfire that Luanne talked about. There's a whole range of evidences, of course, of extensive wildfire uh, at the time of this event over, the, over um, North America. Uh, just simply charcoal, just a simple evidence of charcoal in, in most of these, in most of these uh, layers. There's itself a strong, compelling evidence of extensive wildfire, but there's a lot more than that, as already described. But the one thing that hasn't been mentioned so far is the, uh, is the ice core evidence. And uh, Paul Majewski has joined this group and is uh, uh, very interest, interested and active in it. And, and uh, when you look at the, uh, the Greenland ice core evidence, to make a long story short, there is strong evidence of, of, of a massive um, uh, biosphere burning event at uh, 12.9 uh, thousand years ago at the onset of the Younger Dryas cooling. And it's in the form of uh, the most robust ammoni ammonium and nitrate peaks in the last 110,000 years in the Greenland ice core. And that will be described in, in my talk tomorrow representing Paul Majewski's input to this. So, uh, so we have a lot of parallel evidence of, of this, um, of the, um, uh, of the, of the uh, wildfire, the massive biomass bio burning uh, associated with this, with this event over North America. So the other thing I'll just mention is the, cool, is the Younger Dryas cooling, because that's something that I've, I've worked on the Younger Dryas for probably three decades or more. The, the, uh, the, uh, this event also coincides with um, an abrupt cooling into the uh, so-called Younger Dryas at 12.9. It's already been well known to be dated at 12.9. That's the established age of the onset of the Younger Dryas, for instance, from the Greenland ice cores. And um, the, uh, the Younger Dryas um, uh, cooling, uh, which I'll talk about tomorrow uh, with my uh, uh, collaborators, will. Uh, is a um, uh, we suggest now was triggered by the um, by this extraterrestrial impact that the the abrupt cooling of that that led to the onset of the Younger Dryas cooling actually was the result of this event and that that in a in a nutshell this cooling would not have occurred this major cooling during the last deglacial would not have occurred if this extraterrestrial impact had in fact not occurred that's that's that is the hypothesis that we are proposing. And it's, it's, based, it, it's consistent with a wide range of evidence. When you look at the evidence already out there in terms of the arguments that are around the triggering mechanism for the Younger Dryas, and then you look at the evidence that has been assembled by the paleoceanographic climate community, there's an awful lot of consistency in the data that's already there uh, in support of the um, uh, of the, uh, younger, of the Younger Dryas cooling as a result of an extraterrestrial impact. I'll just leave it at that. Okay, why we open up for questions? Sid? Hi, uh, Sid Perkins from Science. I have a quick question about if you could describe how quickly the onset of the Younger Dryas occurred and how, oh, excuse me, if you can describe how quickly the onset of the Younger Dryas occurred and uh, how the, the temperature dip at that okay. time and also uh, just to follow up is there any uh, oral tradition among North American uh, peoples or tribes that has any sort of uh, <laughs> possible you know well okay I can say something. This. I can say something about the first question Rick on the second uh, the uh, or Douglas um, the uh, yes the the younger Dryas was in a very abrupt cooling it's well established that it occurred in the order of decades. That's all. Just uh, the, the cooling was very large over Greenland. It was eight to ten degrees centigrade drop in temperature, a sudden drop in temperature, in the marine record of Santa Barbara Basin, which is a very high resolution record that I've studied for many years with my colleagues. 